Hey, well, it is good to be with everyone and uh, back here for our time together watching and reflecting on the uh, the Chosen, Season 3, Episode 4. And this is a uh, two-part. You, you can't really say that any of the Chosen is not connected to any other part of the Chosen, right? But this one they specifically have said, this is Part 1, and Part 2 is next week. So uh, 4 and 5 are are together even though they all are together to me. So I don't know how it's going to end. That makes it more specifically part of the next one than not, but apparently it will happen. So if you're joining uh, from the web, uh, back into YouTube, we're going to go watch it right now. So this is your cue to uh, hit pause and go watch season three, episode four, and then come back and we'll, we'll meet you here in a little while. Okay. Okay, so we're back. It really is a cliffhanger. I know why, I know now why they said it's a two part. They left us with Gyrus and we all know what's happening with Gyrus that one. Yep. All right, what'd you think? There's a lot going on. A lot going yeah. on. I think I it's like wonderful the way the miracles that are going to happen are woven into the story of the lives of the people involved. You don't get that in-depth look reading the scripture. Yeah. They have all these other things going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just normal people. Yeah. I just kept thinking about water. <laughs> water. I really... How do you survive? What do you just drink wine all the time? I mean... Ugh. it's pretty bad when i was in africa the bishop's house and his uh the diocesan office and i'm, I'm speaking uh with familiar language but you cannot imagine what this looked like right um it's up a little little mountain hill and it's a place of prestige above kagezi uganda and uh but the problem is at the top of the hill there's no water so they had a cadre of women and children, basically, who would go down, down this little mountain and then out through town and then down into the little valley to where the water was every day starting at about 5 a.m. And they would come back with, with uh, bars across their back and those, those um, buckets, but they of course had, they were five, five gallon jerry cans. And 10, 10 gallons of water. Yeah. Heavy. Heavy. yeah. It, it hit me the second day that I was there um, with, with a horror because they brought me 10 gallons of water every morning for mm -hmm. bathing, for doing whatever I wanted to. And I had no idea. So I changed my habit pretty quick. Yeah. Walking from the well, that well, and standing in the sun with that water on your back. And then going uphill. Yeah. Well, even in the Chosen with the people walking on a flat land, I mean, yeah. you notice that they were all women. Mm, yes. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. The all women. And of course, you're also we're also seeing um, different clips of 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 what women are doing all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're serving all the time. And when uh, when Peter walks in, and, or Peter, yeah, you know, when Simon walks in and and just says, "Hey, hi, Eden," <laughs> <laughs> and what's what's about to happen? <laughs> the the whole world's about to come over, and uh, he, you know, says without even thinking, you know, "Where's the food? Or is there more food?" And she answered, "I'll make more." I mean, what a, what a different world that they that this uh the people lived in and that's really important for us because while what jay says is absolutely true and we want to remember that these are just normal people just like you and i um they also lived in a really different world with different ways of doing things and different priorities and different rules and when we listen to the gospel and we hear jesus talking and we hear paul writing um, oftentimes we, they, what he is saying has more weight and more gravity and more 
more import if we remember that culture that he's living in. You know, who would be hearing these words? To us, you know, they sound really great, but to the people in his culture, they may sound like freedom and equality and new life in a way that we can't even comprehend. So that's wonderful portrayals. And, and massive resistance also. Yes. Before. Yes. What do you think's going on with Eden? I mean, we know what set her off, but what's going on? I think she just wants her husband with her and nothing else. I think she may be tired of the whole group thing going on. No. She wants just to be them two and nobody else. Yeah, well, well. Based on the last, the you know when they were last there, she wants to start a family. Yeah, yeah. she can't start a family if there's no, of, no peace. It's kind of what I meant about together with nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's been gone and she's been there toiling away too. So yeah. I, she did expect a little more than hey. And he didn't notice any of the things she had done. Yes. In the house. Yes. <laughs> she felt unappreciated. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. So this is all the normal, normal kind of response to, would be the response to, to Simon if he was doing anything and came back like that after being gone for a week or two weeks or three weeks or however long it's gone. It's just he just walked in the door riddled with faux pas, right? Yeah. One after the other after the other. Well, he seems to be the only one that's married. Yeah. So it looks like the other guys are just blah, you know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's the only one uh, in scripture whose wife is mentioned. Well, if this is the same, uh, if this is if if this is the way that Eden would respond to Peter if Peter had been out fishing on a fishing expedition for three weeks and then he came back and did those same faux pas what should be different for her now he knows that christ is the messiah and that's a lot more important than anything else or right. should be yeah yeah so what i think what they're showing is jesus has worn off <laughs> he was he was exciting yeah. and he was you know messiah and all that's well and good but when it comes right down to my day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. the thrill is gone and isn't peter doing the same thing simon you know he's oh yeah he had to run out of the room ran out of the room and talked to preemie about he'd want to be around jesus right now when when in the beginning you know peter was all about jesus being the answer and now he's the problem and, and the disciples are very confused. They're, they're, they, they don't really understand fully what's going on. And that, that's revealed a little bit in scripture, but you, you wonder, well, why couldn't they see it? But they couldn't. Right. Well, I mean, they've been healing people. That yeah. had to be, some of them seemed like they, they were feeling their own power. Yeah. And it has to be, confusing shocking to be able to do that all of a sudden yourself so did that diminish jesus since with some of them no because um, i think remember when they were sitting at the table they all agreed that when they were preaching or when they were healing they felt jesus with them they felt him so mm -hmm. you know they felt uh uplifted and enlightened um and on the road, did you see the, that wonderful uh, gray, black and white section at the beginning where it showed the disciples doing this? I thought that was a brilliant technique mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have any information about that at all. So they're no. artistically putting it in this gray, uh, gray, black, I thought just brilliant. They, so they, their, their um, affect on the journey when they were doing these things, they were animated, they were excited, they were doing amazing, miraculous things. And and uh, they were together, you know, they were hugging each other and, you know, being being commuted together. And it was like a thing. So what happened? 
You think Simon missed that? No. When I he got back? I think that they're showing us this just like Eden, that Jesus is worn off. How quickly, when faced with the normal day-to-day -day stresses and strain, even those who were closest to him and had experienced that, that miraculous presence in them just looked at themselves and began to doubt. Just and like that. Day-to-day -day life kind of beats them down. And just Life gets in the way. And this is, if you think about the gospel, this is Jesus who's saying, the, this is always going to happen. No, no, he may not have taught this to them yet in the, in the depths, so maybe we're going to see this later on. He says all the time to the scripture in different, in different contexts that this is the normal state of being, this hectic, go here, be there, be disappointed, be preoccupied, be off track. That's the normal way of being. So that's that will never change. So that being the normal way, you know, a problem today, no problem tonight, a problem tomorrow, a problem tomorrow night, no problem the next day, a problem the next day, that this pattern can be expected in our lives. And instead of being a slave to it and then bouncing around in it like a ball, he says, if you come to me and stay with me, then I will give you this joy and peace and believing that will instead of being subservient to the problems of the day, will cover the problems of the day. So instead of seeing Jesus through the problem, which is what Peter and the disciples and Eden are doing, they're looking at Jesus through their daily problem. Jesus is saying, you need to look at your problem through me. So they've all got it backwards right now. Even when they experienced him and, and have been blessed by him, they're still in that pattern of life because we we can't get away from it it's it's everybody's life every day you know even rich people so it's a i think again it's a wonderful way of showing that and we then this you know we have this we hear this in scripture about the disciples you know they frequently they goof like peter goofs and say well peter's at it again you know he goofed uh, why is he goofing? Because each time they do this, and of course, the who's the who is the supreme goofer in the disciples? Matthew. Matthew. Oh, think of think of the end. Who Judas. Goes? Peter. Judas. Yeah. yeah. And what was Judas thinking of? Was he thinking of Jesus? No, he was himself. thinking. Of, he was thinking of himself and the problems of the day. He was saying the movement needs a kick in the butt. The movement needs to be thrown up. We need to get this thing going. And if we if they, if they take Jesus, then there's going to be an uprising and people are going to get him back. And it's going to be, you know, all this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm lighting the match. It's going to work. But he wasn't thinking about what Jesus was doing or Jesus was saying or Jesus had taught him. He was thinking about his plan and the execution of a plan. You know, it's a, it's a great, it's a great way they're teaching. So did you get the allusion to the broken cistern? So the, you know, you all know what cisterns are, right? They, these, sometimes they're huge. There's, a, there's actually pictures of cisterns in the Middle East that you, the, the hole is so deep, they built a spiral staircase going all the way down to the water because it's so, so deep. Um, this cistern obviously isn't that deep. It's probably 14 feet, 15 feet, and as big around as maybe this room. They were very big. Uh, they they held not only rainwater that fell in, but they had um, that downspouts that they would angle into the ground and then go over to the cistern. So when cisterns were coated on the inside with a clay, a hard clay like a almost like a um, like a pot, like a pottery. So if a cistern, if that wall breaks and uh, the water will leak out. It's the cistern becomes use, worthless, useless, useless. In this case, it was worse because what they, if I remember, if I was correct, it was not only that the water leaked out, but but re, uh, sewage leaked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the 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 integrity of the cistern is just completely gone. So uh, if you remember way back in Jeremiah or in Leviticus, uh, no, no, in Jeremiah uh, eleven, there's um. Uh, 
God talks to the people and says, um, you have traded me, you, the, 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 the living water, for you, you rejected that and built yourself cisterns. And then he says, broken cisterns that will fail you and, and uh, destroy you. And so then we come all the way forward to Jesus. And what does Jesus call himself? He's, what did he call himself in, to, the, to the woman at the well, the, the uh, Samaritan woman? Oh, wow. Living water. Living water. Living water. Living water. You know, <laughs> Jeremiah later on in the book says that uh, it, uh, God is spoken of as uh, this wellspring. This wellspring of living of living water that never never ends, and Jesus picks that up immediately in his uh, in his ministry and says, "I am the living water, uh, and if you come to me, you'll never be thirsty." Right. So that's that again is this overlay. the The problems of the day are not going to go away. It's not like a you know a magic wand that you know I, I believe in Jesus and everything everything's fine for me. But if the if we're being uh, sustained on the living water that's keeping us alive then the day is subject to that not the other way around so the cistern breaks and the problem is bad but they should turn to or see the problem through the teachings of the christ and it would be different the way they respond the way that they understand it the problem the difficulty they have would all be different yeah how about um do you all know what animism is when uh, when Mary was talking to the Ethiopian woman, I keep forgetting her name. Tamara. Um, Tamara, is that right? Remember, Mary said that she was talking about her beads. Yeah. Mary said that sounds like animism. Yeah. Animism is was a it still is today. It's a practice of of uh, imbuing uh, inanimate objects or the belief of that inner inner uh, inanimate objects have been imbued with spirit with spirit life. And at its extreme, it's everything. Everything is like um, earth worshipers, Gaia worshipers, people that worship Mother Earth and that becomes their faith, their religion, they're animists. Mm -hmm. They believe that everything is alive with the spirit. So that's what uh, that's what Mary was saying. That you sound like you think this is a talisman uh, or a, a, you know some kind of magic beads and and animism. So and uh, Tamara, whatever her name is, she was quick to say, I don't know. <laughs> it's different. It's just different. The, the Jews did not have that type of remembrance process, so it's completely foreign to, to Mary. She's being a little insensitive about it with her. Um, let's see what else. Oh, well, the elephant in the room. Uh, what about the woman with the who's bleeding? Veronica. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they've done a great job of portraying her and what she must have gone through trying to hide her condition and the difficulty that would be almost impossible as it as it turned out there at the end and then did the reading at the synagogue about whoever has an issue and mm -hmm. they have to stay outside the camp and yeah that's, that's yeah. in the uh the second uh, 11th chapter of leviticus on and on and on and on and on about your personal cleanliness and what you do and don't do and then and then unclean animals and unclean birds and unclean this and unclean that and how it, it, it affects me every time something is unclean like that guy you know he knew right away oh my gosh i've touched you i can't i can't do anything until i go bathe for a day i can't do anything until nightfall and she said to to um eden right don't don't touch me it's seven days for you so it was that um that outcast that she is every woman was during that time so every month every woman went through that and during that time they would sequester themselves off in their houses and not be seen by anybody because the law said if they touch you or they you touch anything they touch then you are ritually unclean and and it, it's a it's a strange thing because Ritual, which being ritually unclean doesn't mean you can't go to the synagogue. If they're not going to the synagogue and they were, became ritually unclean, what's the big deal? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's no big deal. So, but the, the law, Leviticus, doesn't make it simply about the, uh, the, the synagogue, the temple. The, the Leviticus makes it about all human interaction. 
So if you're ritually unclean, you are banned from all human interaction with other people. It's it's she as for 12 years means she's been at like like she has been in this, but worse because she's known in Capernaum where she came from. So she would be absolutely alone, absolutely isolated. You know, when she said she's going to doctors, those weren't Jews. Uh, the, the Jewish doctors would not would not work with her if there are, were any at that time. And it used to be in the Old Testament, the doctors were looked down upon like they were by, by the Jewish faith that they were, you know, magicians or trying to be and, and, and would give you, um, you know, crazy stuff to do when you're sick, like leeches. <laughs> Put a leech on it. Um, but at the time of Jesus, the the Greeks had made amazing advances in medicine, and even the Jew, even the Jews knew that. And the the idea that doctors that had been trained in the Greek uh, method uh, were actually blessed. They actually had a a healing art. So what it meant, but you never went to them. Jews wouldn't go to them. So what this means is that she is so has been so desperate that she's gone outside of her faith and gone to the Greek and the Roman doctors to try to find an answer, which again would be a scandal if she wasn't already so scandalous. So pretty hard. It's like damned if you do and damned if you don't. Right? There's no 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 winning in this. Um, what do the men do during the seven days that their women can't get water and cook and do yeah. everything for them? Yeah, they can't. They can't cook for them. I'm wondering. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to look that up. I, I'm willing to bet that it's probably somebody else's wife that helps, and the, all the women have a system that they overlap each other and help each other to get okay. over this period of time <laughs> to make things happen. You know, you never. You, I, I didn't read anything about that. Have never read anything about that, but I, I can't imagine that. I suppose if you're in your own house and nobody's watching, you know, she could make food and do all this stuff, but then people would find out and maybe, you know, unless it's a, you know, remember what Jesus says to the Jews when he, when he comes, he says, you know, you've made all these laws to keep yourself holy and then you cheat. You, you don't obey them. You, you, you manipulate them to serve you. So is it is it possible that when that happened, they just closed the woman off in the house and she just continues to do everything <laughs> she's doing and everybody knows. But for everybody, every every wife, every woman that goes through this, everybody does the same thing. They don't obey the law. They cheat. Mm. I, I imagine, though, that there must be um, the people doing that and there must be people that are orthodox and are going to obey the law to the letter. There was a guy who recently, not recently, I don't know, decade ago or so, did live the Jewish laws yes. for a year. Yep. There was also, I feel like there was also a woman that did it. Maybe he and his wife did it together, but I just remember that she would go out and live in a tent mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a week of her time of the month, but that he also realized he couldn't, he couldn't sit on any bus seat or subway seat. <laughs> there may have been somebody who sat on that seat before him wow and so he bought his own little seat it's like a you know just a a, a pole with a little butt bike seat on top of it and he would just sit on that he would just take it with him so that he was able to ride public um transportation wow Amazing. You know, I remember, you know, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, an interesting thing that you just said that I can't, can't be the intent. I mean, it just seems like it's what the heck. Yeah. It doesn't even make any sense. You you just reminded me of something, and I don't. I wonder when I just said that. Um, you know, if you break the rule, who's going to know? And especially if you break the rule, and the other Jews breaking the rule, then who? Because who's going to care? But I, when, when we were uh, flying, I flew with a whole group of Orthodox Jews on the planes. So I wasn't with them, but I was on the same plane. And they all sat in the seats. Nobody came along with a special seat to sit in. So I think yeah. they were kind of ignoring that rule because you know darn well that the planes got hundreds of people in it every day. It's it's bound to be. That but it does get clean between rides, maybe. Oh. <laughs> kind of, sort of. <laughs> 
All right. Let's see. Disciples. Uh, uh, we, um, uh, that that whole I go back to that whole thing where they are they have been in this thought. I like the argument that they have, the discussion they're having, saying we've we've been empowered to do these things. We've done these things. They're incredible things. We don't understand what we're doing. And and to make sense of it, we have to understand. But remember again that Jesus is teaching that you don't have to understand. That that faith comes first, and with faith comes trust, and and trust leads to a revelation. The revelation is understanding. So it may be the other way around. You may come to faith because of your understanding, but it's not necessary. And this is the faith of children, right? Blessed are the little children. If we all don't have faith like a child, uh, they don't understand. They don't care. But isn't, isn't he also helping us realize that we can't understand everything? I mean, we can't. We don't. There are things beyond our understanding. Sure. Yeah. You, you, and we, when you ask why things are the way they are, it don't make sense. You can't. Can't wrap your mind around it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He's. And I think that's the object lesson he's giving the disciples, though they haven't gotten it. Is saying you can live the life of of a, a spiritual person serving God and empowered by God and doing incredible things for God and for each other uh, and do this out of trust and do this out of faith and not understand it. And that's, I mean, that's a huge lesson. And he just taught all the disciples that lesson and none of them got it. <laughs> they all came back and said, no, but we, we don't understand and had that little argument. So I, I, um, I appreciate the the you know the flesh that they're putting on the images of the like jay said the images of the disciples that we have so little of in the scripture yeah all right anything else oh the last thing preemie <coughs> oh my gosh <laughs> i i'm really enjoying the unfolding process and if you look at it i think what we're seeing in part is that the effect that that Jesus is having on a non-Jew because he was there for the miracle. He was there for the, the um, Sermon on the Mount. He's been there to listen to him do other things. And he's heard of the other things. And since he's seen some things and he hears of other things, he's inclined to believe that those other things are happening. And it's softening him. And he probably doesn't want it. And it's not good for him. He's avoiding his boss, right? He's finding his boss yeah. to be unreasonable and, you know, a lot of, kind of maniacal, and he doesn't want to be around him. He's kind of always been a little bit that way. I mean, clearly yeah. he liked Matthew, even though yeah. he was a Jew, yeah. and uh, even though he was weird. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because he was weird. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Simon also... I think he realizes maybe he has more in common with him than he thought he did yeah. when, he, when they were tying the knots. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. one fisherman to, you know, yep. his grandfather. Yeah. He offered him that drink. He couldn't Turned drink it because 2, of the last years ago. Yeah. yeah the vessel was, was unclean. Yeah. But, you know, the, the gesture was fun, you know, monumental. Yeah. That he would just kind of say, okay, we're drinking buddies for a little while. You know, kind of suspend this whole you know, hierarchical thing. We're just sitting here, like you guys are saying, you know, two kind of fishermen trading knots. And, and I, 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 all, I really expected Peter before Simon, before Premi left to say, can you teach me that knot you made? Because he'd remember Simon didn't know that knot. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would have been a really nice touch to have that push it a little further. But um, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to see what goes on now. Okay, so Jairus. So you remember Jairus in the scripture? Jairus' mm -hmm. daughter. Um, she mm -hmm. what? She, she died. She, she died. She died. Okay. She died. Remember, I don't know my scripture, so I don't know who these people are. That's all right. So Jairus' daughter died, and and that's why the mom is went into check and then screamed like that because her daughter's dead in the bed. She, she maybe gets sick off some bad water from the. Yeah, um, the, the thing in the street. Yeah, uh, we go. That's sister. Yeah. Sister. Yeah, some bacterial infection from the yeah. sludge in the. Bottom. Well, if there was if there was sewage getting in, then yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. Real bad, real quick. Really In one of the previous episodes, Jairus was very dismissive of Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. put him down. Uh, and it seems like he's coming along a little bit, maybe believing some uh, bef before the thing with his daughter happened. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, that's another one. Gosh, it seems like there's so much going on in this one. So I love the, the discussion between Jairus and the, and the rabbi, and the rabbi yeah. who wrote the letter, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and and how Jairus is has just he, now he hasn't seen Jesus. No, he's mm -hmm. just read the letter and gone to and looked at the scripture, and his excitement's coming from you know one step removed. So it's that belief without seeing, belief without touching. You know, blessed are those who believe and don't don't get the advantages of of eating and drinking and touching and. You know, it's back to Thomas uh, in in the upper room after the resurrection. You know, blessed are they who don't don't see and yet still believe. And you you could see. I love the how when they were talking that that like the Messiah was just so jammed right in here. It wanted to come out so bad, but they couldn't say it. Yeah. So it's um and, and it's like a wink wink kind of thing. Yeah. It makes perfect sense now why we know what's going to happen with Jairus now that his daughter's dead. You know, he's not going to go running to the to the uh, uh, to the rabbis so much as to a rabbi because he's got this belief in him now, thanks to the letter of the other rabbi. And now also with the rabbis, we see the beginning of the end, right? That uh, yeah. law that they passed or the edict, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. They're doing a really good job of showing the Jewish um, political structure as very corrupt, very politicized, very um, infighting, backbiting, um, kind of, um, well, I would say a word I've already used, kind of maniacal because uh, you're, you're planning your process uh, to harm somebody else from the very beginning. Like, what can I do here to get that guy? And it's those two rabbis, right? The two chief rabbis that are against each other. And in this one instance, they've joined together to do this. It sounds awful lot like our system, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this would be an indication that things just don't change. The people there, the sin. When I was again in Uganda and I came back, they said, um, uh, in the church, first church that I visited to talk about it, they said, what was... What was one of the first things that you learned that, that was that really shocked you? And I said, okay, that was easy. Um, one of the first things that I learned without being able to speak the language or communicate with anybody was that sin is sin. That the people there, and believe me, there are people there. There was one one uh, man who came to me in Kigezi that people would we people would travel for hours to to get to me, uh, just because I was a white a white man that they hadn't seen a white man or they had a question. So this guy came with a question for, came for hours to ask me this question. And he asked me, he said, why do they call uh, black people in the United States black? He said, why do they, why do, they do that? And I, I'm like, what a question. And then he goes, they're not black. I'm black. And he wasn't kidding. He was black. He was so dark that his eyes were yellow. He was the probably the blackest man I've ever been close to. A lot of a lot of the other Africans were that that black. They're not really black. It's brown, but it's so dark. They're so dark um, that um, to to come and ask you these questions. So I found out that sin is sin. That the corruption that they have, that the lies that they tell, that the the uh, machinations, the the way that they gather together to get over on each other, it's all the same. All the same. This is a pre-industrial agrarian. Um, most of the country is all agrarian. There's no, there's no mechanics. There's no anything. There's, it's, it's, like, it's like 1800. And yet they're just like us. And so that guy, black is pitch, right? But the, doesn't know anything about anything as in the first world nothing but his sin his corruption was exactly like mine and ours in every way 
So the people back then, just like us. So that just moves Jesus's words forward that makes it more pertinent to us, more important. If Jesus was preaching to them and they are just like us, then the words that Jesus was preaching are just for us in the same way. He's, he's talking beyond the idea of our station or our, our, uh, our sophistication. He's talking to our spirit, who we are. I sent, an email, I sent an email on Sunday about the after show. Um, I don't think anybody answered it, but. Oh, I did so, so sorry. There is an after show. I actually tried to find that. Um, did you send a link? Um, I don't. Let me look. I think uh, I said. Yeah, you sent a link to me, I think. I think I saved it. Um, yeah, I sent it. Shoot. I, I sent the link. I sent the after three after episode three link. So sorry. Um, I mean it's an hour, so we can't do both in the same right. night. Right. So, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe, I don't know if we want to. How do you look it up? Is it just YouTube? It's under. It's just under watch watch dot the chosen dot TV. Here I have a link here. Hang on. We'll put that in the chat. Oh, let change this. And you know, email us in chat. And there it is. Yeah. So if you see the, the actors a... as themselves in this, as yeah. you so you, I don't think I want to see them as themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it's them? Just fascinating, like what they brought to it, what they thought about it. You've got. I, I just I really enjoyed it. If you if you don't want to, that's fine. I'll watch it separately. But mm -hmm. I just thought it was very cool to see what the writer was thinking too. And yeah, it's really gonna be uh you're really gonna have to make your like I, I was looking on YouTube and found like the 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 blooper reel to one of them, and I turned it on and immediately I turned it off. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see your whole opinion right. about it. I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna see them in there it's not showing bloopers but one of the thing that i love what they said in this one was fascinating was that jesus got to talk to his father to the person playing his father as an adult but his father was you know those scenes were from when he was a child right and he just thought that was really very cool <laughs> i mean it's so yeah, it is about the actors, but it also is about the relationships they're trying to depict and the things they think, like what did Mary know or what, you know, how much does Mary know about the end? Like she well, says, I'm not the, ready for this. Uh, I'm not ready for this. So you definitely have they feel like she knew, um, or that probably Jesus had told her that yeah. it's you know, there's he probably prepared her and um anyway i just i i really like it That's if you want to um alan has stuck it in the chat so if you you can open the chat that chat button is down at the bottom just click on it and it'll open a sidebar on the right side of your screen that has a that's a chat section so if you look down at the bottom it says on the you know your security participants polls chats you have all those or maybe i just have them because i'm the, the uh, you have a few more as host but okay we have chat, yeah. If you can, and then if you go to the chat bar and just uh, you can just click on it. Actually, in my on my computer, it opened the window just by clicking on it. But you can also uh, right click on it, and it'll copy the link. It says it says right in there, copy link, and then you can go when after this is over and put it up in the search bar, and you click again and and say paste, and it'll take you right there. And then if you want to watch it, you can. If you don't want to watch it, you run screaming from the room. <laughs> all right guys you guys are great this is one of my favorite times it really is um can't wait till next time to see what comes up it's going to be really good these are really good thank you so much i hope okay. that you pray everybody you. Have a wonderful night and a, and a good peaceful sleep thank you thank, thank you, you. Too. and say a prayer for us not to have too much smoke up here tomorrow because it's supposed to get bad Okay, we'll do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it stays away from down there. All right. Yeah. Take care. See y'all. Have a good week. Bye, Mom.